first off, who wrote it and when? Some people think that Moses wrote it, which he didn't because Moses didn't exist. So then you have to think, well, who did write it? And it's basically a collection of different um, authors from centuries and centuries. So probably with the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament, you're talking about at least 500 years in the making. With the New Testament, you're talking about probably 150 to 200 years in the making. But basically, it was all written by men with daddy issues. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the thing. There are people right now writing complaint letters just on the first answer <laughs> to the first question. Right, so I'm wondering why is taking a historical approach to the Bible so controversial? It's controversial because when you do take a historical approach, so look at the archaeological evidence for events or people described in the Bible, it's very hard to find corroborating evidence to support the biblical claims about the past. So once you start saying, did this actually happen or not? So was Jonah swallowed by a big fish? Obviously, no, he wasn't swallowed by a big fish. Was there an exodus from Egypt? No, there wasn't an exodus. So once you start doing that, then you have to start doubting the credibility of all the other claims that the Bible makes. And that's why people get annoyed, because for some reason, people like to think that the Bible's true. Right. <laughs> no, people like, people like peeps like to think that they the Bible really is like, true. Yeah. They really Well, get back. The, the first thing, one of the first things you said was Moses wasn't real. Yeah. Right. Now, we've just had Pesach, the celebration of freedom of the Jews. Yeah led by Moses to freedom, yeah. and you're saying he wasn't real? No, he probably wasn't. So there's a lot about him that's really interesting. So in his tradition, the traditions that are told about him, so Moses is an Egyptian name. Um, the Hebrew Bible writers kind of say this name is derived from a Hebrew verb, meaning to draw out of the water, so when he was a baby and kind of set into the basket of reeds. But actually... It's... So, so far, story checks out. So far, it checks out, except that... Moses himself, he's, he, there's, there's no evidence for him being a historical figure, like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, all of that. It's all made up. Um, <laughs> but, but he's drawn on different sorts of religious figures that probably were around very broadly in the culture. So he's like a bit of a magician. So, you know, he's like, woo, look at this star. Yeah, yeah we, we all like a good magician, yeah, but well, some people want to believe it's more than that. How do you know? Like, when you say none of that was real, it was all made up, how do you know? Because dating the text, you can see in terms of the Hebrew words that are used, in terms of some of the details, like references to camels. There were no camels in that part of the world at that time. That kind of stuff. You lied to me, Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that kind of detail tells you that these texts were written many centuries after the events that they're describing. And then you can see the ideology. Well, why are they telling the story about escape from slavery and oppression and movement into a promised land? It's because the, the writers themselves were in their own kind of slavery and oppression, but in Babylon in the 6th century BCE, not in Egypt hundreds and hundreds of years before that. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It, okay. makes, it, it makes perfect sense.